Thank you for watching us on YouTube. But did you know that if you're on the go, you can get the full show as a podcast now? You can get our morning breakdown of the most important topics facing our country, news not being covered by the mainstream media, interviews with change-making progressives, and info on what you can actually do about all this. Search for The Damage Report on your favorite podcast app and subscribe so you know when new episodes are ready to go. Hey America, you're still being lied to. This is another myth of American politics. You know, I've come to expect that our intros blow up at the end. That one doesn't, um, probably for the best. So look, you are being lied to and expect more lying in the future. This time on the topic of stop and frisk. This is an issue that made a lot of news over the past decade or so, having to do with the experiment that was done on it uh, in mass terms in New York City. Uh, but now, while the New York City has moved on from that policy, you might start seeing it crop up in other places because Donald Trump uh, talked about it back during the last campaign, and he's been bringing it up this week as well, talking about stop and frisk being a gigantic success at driving down crime rates, and also saying, more importantly, perhaps, that it's not in any way unconstitutional. Turns out neither of those are actually accurate. Now, if you're not familiar with stop and frisk, it is a wide scale policy of randomly stopping people and checking them out with the presumption that many of them are probably criminals of one form or another. And the idea being that if you create an oppressive enough environment where people expect that they will be interfered with by police, that criminals will either avoid these areas, move out, or you know, tamp down their activities. And the idea, the myth that has come out of this experiment is that Okay, maybe it's racially discriminatory in an awful way, but at least it accomplished its goals. It drove down property crimes, violent crime, and all of that. There's a problem with that though, and that's when you actually look at the numbers. Because for that to be true, you would have to have stop and frisk and then have a reduction in crimes. I think that seems fair, that's how causality works. You have a thing and you have its effect. Um, so why don't we actually look at some of these numbers? Uh, how many stop and frisks there were per year? Uh, how many murders, how many violent crimes? Let's bring up these charts and you'll see there. Uh, so you see uh, murders, I mean, you know, any murder is bad, but the number went down per 100,000 residents between 1990 and 2010, started to go up just a little bit. And that was actually similar in violent crimes as well. From the 90s through the 2000s, a drastic drop in that crime. Now, you do see that stop and frisk, which started off as uh, not too common in 2002, it looks like, started to skyrocket up into 2010. And they don't want you to actually combine those things, but thankfully the Washington Post has done that. Let's bring up this combined chart showing the number of violent crimes, murders, and stop and frisks over time. So th that's problematic for them. Under Mayor Dinkins and through to Giuliani, although starting with Dinkins, murders and violent crime began to drop precipitously over the course of the late 90s, the mid to late 90s. Uh, the drop started to level off under Giuliani, but it was still fairly significant. It goes down slightly under Bloomberg, that is true when the stop and frisk started. But the vast majority of the drop in murder and violent crime had already been finished before the first stop and frisk was actually instituted under Mayor Bloomberg. And you see there that the numbers of stop and frisk go up dramatically over the next five to 10 years. But the actual decline in violent crime levels off at that point. And so the idea that it could be responsible for the drop in crime is it's made a sham when you actually look at the numbers. If anything, it looks like if you're talking about causality, the drop in crime actually led to the stop and frisk. That's not actually what happened, but that's the only thing you can draw from this actual information. So when they say this is a policy that worked in New York City, they either don't know what they're talking about or they're purposefully deceiving you. And the reason they're doing it is because they want to apply this to other places. Donald Trump has been talking about this for a couple of years now. He will continue to. He wants it in Chicago, he wants it in other major cities. Not because it will actually stop crime, the numbers don't bear that out at all. But they like the oppressive, racially discriminatory atmosphere that it produces in these areas. The vast, vast majority of the hundreds of thousands of stop and frisks that actually happened, the numbers show, happened to African Americans, Latinos in general. That is not some sort of weird historical artifact, that was the policy as designed being implemented. And even the guy who tries to claim that it was a success, Bloomberg, he says on the racial discriminatory thing, he says it targeted too many white people. So the lesson certainly has not been learned, except we can do better now that we actually know the numbers. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the Damage Report. 
If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.